Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Uh, so a lot of people have been asking me about doing videos on all the changes and news with the Marvel movies and TV shows. They got the Sony thing with the rights to Spider-Man that was kind of, you know, they were sharing with uh, Marvel Studios and now that's on, it's off, and then they were saying there's going to be a Ms. Marvel TV show along with She-Hulk and Moon Knight, which I'm actually excited about. And then I just saw that uh, Anthony Mackie is saying no, he will not be the next Captain America. So you might think I could get like six videos out of that, but I really don't have any opinion besides most of these are just going to be fine. Uh, the, the Kamala Khan sitcom, whatever it's going to be, is fine. A lot of these Disney shows seem to be half hour, basically sitcoms. I think the WandaVision and, and uh, uh, this one are shorter ones. So it's kind of like, eh, it's fine. The, the weird thing is there's so much product. If something's terrible, you know, if Captain Marvel comes out and it's terrible, well, the next Avengers movie comes out like five weeks later. So, eh. The, the main thing I think about is that uh, I was actually thinking about the circus. Uh, just as I was driving, I go, uh, it's kind of a knock against the human race that we didn't stop uh, circuses like a freaking hundred years ago. <laughs> now, I know, like, you know, they're kind of gone now and they've been gone for what, like five, ten years? But when I was a kid, like, the circus would roll into town, and uh, you think I'm going to talk about, like, the animals being whipped and, and held in cages. Human beings risk their lives. These people literally lived in trailers. What, what does a trapeze artist in 1985 make? Like, 20 grand? And they would, they, would, they would have the net, they would do a bunch of stuff, and then they would take away the net. And everyone would go, <gasps> they would get all excited, like, oh, cool, maybe they're going to die. <laughs> Why? That seems like something that should have been outlawed in the 1800s. It's a freaking blood sport. Um, but anyway, one of the things I was thinking about is, you know, uh, you got all these uh, comics pros, and they're all, oh, uh, movies, TV, movies, TV, oh, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Netflix. But uh, don't forget about the net. Don't forget about the net. The net is the comic book industry. All these pros who go to Hollywood, Frank Miller, Howard Chaikin, Neil Gaiman, Garth Ennis, Mark Miller, they all come back. And those are the successful ones. We're not even talking about the ones who go and be some Joe Schmo TV writer. Uh, but uh, don't forget about the net. Don't roll up the net. Don't take it down. The net's there for a reason. So anyway, if you don't need nets because you are fearless girl, then uh, read this extremely condescending segregationist book meant to bilk uh, uh, taxpayer money from uh, virtue signaling librarians. One thing I just keep wondering is how big do SJW comic book pros and companies think libraries are and are going to get because yeah and you go you go to a big city the main downtown library slash homeless shelter which is what they all basically default to uh, after uh, well, three seconds after opening the first day in Austin they had you know the downtown uh, library it was like four stories tall and it was it was a straight-up homeless shelter like there would be a crowd of 30 to 40 homeless people right outside every day waiting to go in. They go in, they take all the seats, they pass out, they piss themselves. And then, you know, once a year, like, uh, Austin uh, Downtown Library is uh, getting fumigated for bed bugs again. Um, so then they spend $30 million building a new one. It's like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> okay, so you just, built, you just built another homeless shelter. That's what you did. Wh what's the point? What's the point? Um, so, you know, most towns of, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand to a couple million, you're going to have a gigantic downtown library that's basically a homeless shelter, but then you're going to have the neighborhood ones. The neighborhood ones are usually about the size of, I don't know, like a fast food joint, you know, they're usually about the size of like a, a I'd say two, they're like two Burger Kings. Um, and then they're going to have a comic book section, usually one in the kids section, one in, you know, general audiences, whatever they call it. Now, I've seen, especially in Austin, I've seen ones that have, 
like a whole row of graphic novels. But you would have to have... Do you remember in the first Matrix movie where uh, they uh, they need guns and they have this like infinite rack of, I think it's M16A1s? Uh, that, is that what you imagine? Yes, we know. You, you, you figure out a little a side hustle to sell uh, woke books to librarians. But you're putting out every week on Comixology, you know, they'll have the, the floppies and then they'll have the trade paperbacks. And the trades sell for dirt cheap, even brand new. The, these SJW trades are like $8.99 for like five or six issues of story. Story. Um, they're not making much off of library sales and libraries do not have infinite uh, shelf space. You know what kind of does have infinite shelf space or at least a lot more? A comic book store that could accommodate multiple rows. I remember going into comic stores that had rows and rows and rows of good comics and now uh, I go into one and they have half a card table. Um, don't roll up the net. Don't take down the net. You need that net. So anyway, Fearless is the fiercest ladies of the Marvel Universe. You go. Who are the fearless? Captain Marvel. They're the despots of space. Storm. They're the genetic supremacists of the skies. Invisible Woman. They're the protectors of the planet. When they're, whenever they're on the planet. Miss Marvel. They're the guardians of their hometowns. And then uh, what we got is segregation. A book where only women are allowed to write, draw, and color. Uh, women and trans people only. I believe men are allowed to letter? Is there lettering? I can't. A name like Cardinal Ray, I have no idea. Looks like cover artist, editors. Oh, you go, girl. All female editors. Yeah, this is absolutely horrible. Um, so they've got uh, one ongoing s story that's called Campfire Song. And then two... I, so this is actually like a short story, like in an anthology. This literally seems to be a writing test. Back in the day when they had a more standardized, you know, way of uh, applying to work at Marvel, they would say, hey, uh, here's four pages of plot that Stan Lee wrote, but it has no dialogue, so just write some dialogue over it. We're, we're going to see if you can write in Stan's style, the Marvel style, on and on and on. Um, so we'll get to that. So uh, the main story is about a camp where weird things are happening. Um, so what do we got? We got uh, Miss Marvel and uh, a guy who uh, I'm pretty sure goes toe to toe with guys like Thor. I'm sorry, guys who temporarily have the title of Thor. Hashtag woke, hashtag be better. Um, you ready to back down little girl? You ready to be stop being a sexist jerk old man? And I'm, this is another blonde haired white villain in a Ms. Marvel comic. That's pretty much mandatory. Um, so uh, I have a question. Why is he a sexist for accurately describing you? You're small and you're a female child. By the way, how does her power work? So you've got mass in your hands, but this guy can... What, what can this guy lift? He can lift like 60 tons, right? Pile driver? Yeah, that's fine. Oh my gosh, look, she's so... Oh, she's so random. So then uh, she goes to the... Oh my gosh! What? Okay, seriously. Marvel, you gotta decide whether Kamala, who's like 16, whether her mo mother is in her 40s, 60s, 80s, or 100 years old. What is this? Also, is she melting? or the Red Skull in disguise. So then uh, she goes to she goes to this camp and the camp just made me laugh so hard. Because one of the things, you know, about uh, political correctness about SJWs, and as I say, SJWs are the worst people the human race has ever produced. Uh, they are consumed with hatred and destroying people and they never see people as people. They just see them as things they can use. If some guy solicits <laughs> GoFundMe funds saying, Help me stand up to racism and bigotry. You can almost guarantee he's not actually doing that. He's just using those very serious things as a way to bolster his own ego. So I always imagine, so, so what do we got here? We got the uh, 
overweight, vaguely ethnic. Uh, we got the pink hair. We got the boyish, and then we got the uh, hijab. I always just, uh, I always just imagine there's like a, uh, what's it called? It's called a unit production manager uh, on movie sets. It's basically like almost like a gunny or something like that. You're, you're just. You're making sure people get things and they have the water and the and electric, you know, the electrical power unit, whatever. Let's make sure everything's kind of happening. And I just imagine uh, like a second uh, boyish uh, girl walks up. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We already got one of you. And then like a second girl in a hijab is like, ah, 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 ah. I need like a 500 pound uh, uh, Samoan in a wheelchair. Another girl would call her, yeah, we got, we, no, no, we're good. We're good. We're good, honey. We're good. Uh, so then we get into, and if you say, like, this looks incredibly boring. Oh. <laughs> oh. So this is the second story, and I believe this is like 16, 18, 20. Uh, this is the second of, a, let's say, 16-page story. The first installment was people arriving at camp. The second installment is other people arriving at camp. Uh, where, <laughs> and just, oh my gosh. Watch, watch this uh, dialogue. There is so much auntie humor. We're in our 10th year. We've had the time to work the bugs out. Sometimes, literally, we had Jessica Drew last year and some genius brought her a bucket of spiders. I bet she didn't appreciate that. Spiders are not bugs. That's what Miss Drew said. Ha ha you, you go girl. You go girl. So anyway, then we get oh my gosh. Look. Sebastian Bach has been doing P90X. It's good for you. No, that's uh Carol Danvers. I just saw just some guy just uploaded a video that they're gonna make uh Captain Marvel a villain in the 10th re reboot of her series in the last, I don't know, seven or eight years, but he uh, very accurately points out she's already been a villain like three different times. So somebody didn't get the memo that we're not drawing Carol Danvers like a man anymore. Like a man anymore. Like a man any more. Like a man anymore. That's Carol Danvers, not Sebastian Bach on HGH. That is Carol Danvers, a woman. Okay, so uh, then, uh, then we get a night nurse story, uh, which is better but still kind of terrible because it's still so much like uh, it's just obsessed. By the way. This drove me absolutely insane. When you put a sound effect right there in the middle of the door, it looks like that's a logo on the door. This is basic stuff, and you're screwing it up. So then we got, oh boy, you could sit more feminine. I'm talking to the woman, not Dr. Strange. She couldn't possibly sit more feminine. Um, by the way, they have these uh, rocks all over, you know, Central Park, and sometimes they're very big, big. And I remember one time when I first moved to New York City, way back in the 1990s, I was climbing, I was climbing, and I was all impressed with myself. I was like, man, you're so brave. This is, you're just, and then I got to the top, and it was paved. <laughs> so many people had been up there, and they had somehow gotten paving equipment up there. Um, but anyway, she's, uh, uh, it's food, talking about food. Yeah, it's uh, food, and, um, How's, kitten, how's kitchen got so de gentrified and gentrification? Gentrification is some great crime uh, to SJWs. I'm sorry that a neighborhood that has had different uh, cultural makeups over the last 200 years now has a different cultural makeup than it had 40 years ago. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kel's, Hell's Kitchen got so gentrified, my clientele were getting noticed. So her clientele are like mutants. So she's saying Hell's Kitchen a neighborhood full of bodybuilding gay men in their 40s and 50s who make $230,000. She's saying it's bad that they gentrified the neighborhood and uh, they would be judgmental of her of her mutant clients. So she moved up to, uh, uh, and then he goes, uh, it's easier up here. So she's, uh, 
she's got. I think she's in uh, East Harlem. I think they said her. Uh, so when he, go, he goes, mm, stop evading the subject and hogging the uh, banana crispies, toastonies. Sheesh. Honestly, Stephen. Marvel Comics in 2019. Uh, so I can't show the rest of it, but um, it's uh, just, just really poorly written. Let's, let's just skip to the uh, the final story, which you're going to say, that's, no. So it, the final story is by Eve Ewing, who gets the lead interview. A full-page interview for a three-page story. Uh, the story is, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. So when all-new Wolverine was rebooted as X-23 and then rebooted to a canceled series as all SJW series are. They had a storyline, a very vague storyline. They would just kind of reference and kind of go back to uh, that they were trying to find all of their clones and rescue them. So this story is uh, them going to find a clone and rescue them. They go into the place and then somebody pulls guns and then uh, they escape and then they... They let the, the kids go, and they say, no kid deserves to be in a cage. That's topical. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, so uh, this is, you know, it's not a scam, but it's definitely uh, sad. It's a book uh, based on segregation, <laughs> based on condescension, based on having a lower excuse me, having no standards for art, uh, editing, uh, or writing, and uh, give this to a uh, kid you don't like. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. You're funding an original uh, lawsuit and original content. I kind of screwed that one up. So, uh, 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 like I said in my other video, uh, we got some progress. One of the stalling tactics uh, that was uh, already on the schedule for Mark Wade's team, uh, a federal judge basically said that doesn't apply in Texas anymore, so womp womp. Uh, we've got a schedule of sorts. It does go into well into next year. And Mark Wade is hoping that my war chest goes completely empty and I give up. Uh, he's, you know, someone he had uh, issues with said that that was the threat straight up um so uh what was her name shannon means outlaw something like that shannon pierce outlaw i think don't contact her um but uh thanks for everyone giving to that i see and i get the uh donations to the gofundme every single day no matter what it is if it's nine uh dollars if it's nine hundred dollars uh i get it and then i pay my uh lawyers once a month. Um, so it's really a lawsuit about freedom, the freedom to do business without people defaming you. Uh, there was this law, uh, the, the decision with the federal judge, there was this law that was meant to bolster free speech and basically it made it impossible to prove defamation, like ridiculously difficult. Um, uh, but now uh, that uh, doesn't apply in uh, uh, for uh, diversity cases. That's uh, when people are from two different states uh, held in uh, federal courts in Texas. So good news. Thanks for watching. Bye.